Local stories, local people. We're taking you inside Western Mass News. It's the Even Better Western Mass Podcast with Dave Madsen. Welcome to this week's edition of the Even Better Western Mass Podcast. Hope you and your family had a happy and safe Christmas. It is the last week of 2020, a year that we are all very happy to see come to an end. One for the history books, that's for sure. From COVID-19 to the race for the White House and everything in between. In this week's Even Better Western Mass Podcast, we look back at the year that was. I have some help from two longtime friends and well-known personalities in Western Mass, Dave Brunell, and Scott Cohen. David Scott, thank you for uh, for being with me to uh, to wrap up the wonderful year that we call 2020. Well, yeah, you say that now, but we haven't started really. <laughs> Before we go on, Dave, I have to uh, express something, okay? Can I say something? Sure. I'm a little disappointed. I'm happy to be here on on your show, but um when when they told me I was doing this, I misunderstood. I thought it was the Dave Madden podcast <laughs> and david here i was thinking all this time being the sports guy i thought this was the john madden podcast ah <laughs> oh, come on you can tell i'm dealing with two guys who are over 60 uh or, or it just turned dave, dave congratulations by the way on your 60th birthday i just yeah i just turned 60 um i uh, i went to bed i was 59 and i woke up in the middle of the night to pee and uh and voila i was 60 my <laughs> wife bought me a mug want to see what she, she you know you get funny mugs when you turn certain ages want to see yeah. the mugs she got me love to <laughs> the blank that's one. it that's the mug fill in the blank yeah i'll get a pen later well, dave's, Scott, got, dave's got the dave's got the body of rock hudson if he saw what he was doing to it he'd kill him <laughs> You can tell you a, guys worked together before. <laughs> I had a better punchline. I'll give it to you off the air. <laughs> How long ago was it uh, when you worked together? Um, 22 years ago, 23 years ago. Yeah, about what? Like maybe 90, 99, 2000, 2001, right? Yeah, there? yeah. I, I started the show before you you joined, uh, joined us. But uh, yeah, around then, yeah. I don't think the specific date is all that important. The point is... When I started working with him, I just thought he was kind of a jerk. But we we got we got uh, we we started this kind of on air feud. You know, it was like a joke thing. You know, like like you know, and uh, and after a while, we talked to him. He said, "Scott, this isn't really all that fake, is it?" But now we love each other, right? We do. Yeah, it, it it kind of did start that way. I mean, you know, Dave Dave and I really didn't we didn't know each other. I mean, I think. Um, I knew of him and, you know, and he, Dave's not the, I know Dave's one of the things Dave and I always joked about is Dave's probably the least uh, knowledgeable uh, sports fan in the world. Oh, absolutely. And, and he, and, and you, you used to thrive on that. Oh so yeah. There would be, there'd be no reason for him to be like watching me on TV, but I was a, just a huge fan of WRNX back in the day. And I still, uh, you know, people still to this day will talk about the Dave in the Morning Show. They really do. And so, you know, Dave and I needed to come up with some sort of shtick. And as much of it was a, a shtick, it's like we were polar opposites. So it was easy to get on each other's nerves. I remember a few blow ups, but yeah. I won't go into detail. But I could. But uh, but I, you know, <laughs> I remember him. That's and all. Dave, and uh, Dave Matson, one of the one of the uh, I think one of the things that really made um dave and and my relationship work was that uh dave dave is a jew and and i'm an honorary jew so i kind of knew the nuances of being jewish and dave uh, one of the underlying threads in dave's um you know routine was being that jewish guy and he had a lot of jewish humor and I understood it. And I think that's one of the things that he and I had in common. It was a very old fashioned, like Dave said, he has a lot of old style references. It really was that old 1930s, 40s, 50s humor. And, and it stuff. worked for us. The Borscht Belt. The yeah. Borscht Belt. You know, I'm a convert, right? I mean, for the, rec for the record, that is true. <laughs> 
Well, regardless, you play you play it very well. Thank you very well. Very You're much. Welcome. You know, if only laugh, re- I'm laughing and I'll go there. If only Republicans and Democrats could find the common ground like the both of you did. <laughs> well, you know what he did? He once I was Dave in the morning and we never said my last name ever. And it was a big secret. Oh, Nobody knew it. True. And and I people would interview me and I they, they, I wouldn't tell them. And they say everybody respected that except this guy. One day he gets on the air and he says, Dave, I made arrangements for you to do the toy, coin toss at the Long Meadow East Long Meadow game. And I told the athletic director, you're Dave Brunell and you graduated the cloud, blah, 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 blah. And uh, that was the first time my name had ever been said on the air. And he was- got, he was so <laughs> upset with me. Like, yeah. <laughs> not like, oh God, you know, why did, why did you say that? He was pissed. I was, I was. And I was looking at him like, what's the problem? So that was kind of our, our relationship. But I, I love the time on the show with Dave. I, you know, I, I think he's he's brilliant. Um, it was just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I'm glad. Yeah, you know, I, I, I look tried back to make on that fun finally. I tried to make that work for me. Just do Dave on the news. Oh, so the many years. And Scott <laughs> blew my cover too. So it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, I brought you. I brought, I brought you a little gift, by the way. Okay. It's uh, here. It's, it's it's for your middle your last name. <laughs> okay. Come come join the tribe. Yeah. See. Yeah. See, Dave, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is what made it work. It, hilarious. This hilarious. took about five minutes. Yep. You, you guys are back on it. Yeah. Yep. I, well, I remember. It. I remember the time. So, let's just say someone in the community had passed away, and I didn't know him. We didn't know him, but he was well known enough that we talked about it on the air. And and I didn't tell Scott we were doing this. And and Scott called in, and I thought maybe because Scott knew the guy, I thought maybe Scott could reminisce tell a nice story and i asked him live on the air without any any warning that i was going to do that i said maybe you know you have a nice memory you can share what i didn't know is this person who had passed away was not really well liked he wasn't liked by scott and, and scott had nothing nice to say about him and that was the time you laid in on me because when we go into commercial break you were furious that i set you up that way because you had nothing to say <laughs> Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> well, guys, we come together uh, to, to and I thought there would be no, not be two better guys to talk with uh, about the year that was 2020 uh, than the two of you, because I know you have such a, a clear view of, of and, and an unobscured view of things that, you know, you just look at things as the way they are. People about say that about us, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, you know, it, it, the year started off and, and, you know, I really thought this would be the thing that was going to dominate through the year that uh, Harry and Meghan uh, quit the royal family. Get out of here. You haven't heard. Harry and Meghan Schwartz? Harry and Meghan Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> they used to run the Bijou? The Bijou, yeah. So, but, yeah. <laughs> and so after around the same time. belt humor. What, hey, what, what are the two of them thinking about? Listen, I know it's all well and good that you want to go kind of do your own thing. But at the end of the day, it's all about the money. Just, <laughs> just play ball. You know, give it, do the 80-20 rule. Be 80% you know, on your own, 20% in the family. But don't, don't ever turn your back on the money. You know who they should have talked to first was Shelly Long. After leaving Cheers? Shelly Long. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I, I saw today that they're they're going to do their own podcast, so uh, this has some competition. That's unique. Yeah. Hey, so, that, now, Dave, there, there's an interesting question. Who do you guys listen to podcasts? I do. I do. Well, you know, one of my favorites is uh, there, there's one called the Carson Podcast uh, that talks that they have old guests from the right. Tonight Show. Have you heard that one? And and I've Conan O'Brien. That. Uh, right, I Conan, listen to Conan. Yeah. Yeah. I used to listen to Gilbert Gottfried all the time because he's he just has old stars. Yeah. And they keep dying, you know. He'll have Joe Franklin on, and then Joe Franklin's Joe dead. Franklin, but, yeah, it. but everybody he has on just, you know, passes away, sadly, because they're they're on their way out. But uh but I, in answer to your question, not a not not a lot of podcasts. I listen to them to to when I go to bed. And so most of them I've heard three or four minutes and then I fall asleep. Oh yeah. Uh, about that. That happens at our age. So you don't listen to him. Well, you know, you're an old radio guy. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, my um, 
you know, my, my daughter who, who will be 24 in, in a couple of weeks loves podcasts. I know people who listen to them, you know, religiously. And uh, I mean, I think there might be one or two that I check in on occasionally, but, but I don't. And there, that, that has really, you know, much as long as we've been in broadcasting about how things have changed, like, look, look what we're doing right now. People love podcasts, and I'm I'm just amazed about how many different there's there's something for everyone, no matter what you're interested in. There's a podcast that can fill that that need for you. Well, I was told it was the place for washed up TV people to go. So yeah, well you know, here we are. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> here I am. <laughs> so anyhow, we we begin the year, and you know, there's there's talk of this thing called COVID and everything else. Did did either one of you have any idea that we would get to the point where we're at now? No, we all had this this like two month notion for some reason. It was like, well, I'll give it two months. You know, things will be back to normal. Um, but I one thing I sensed early though that this was serious enough that people were suggesting like, you know, I should do a song parody about it and this and that. And right off the bat, that that rubbed me the wrong way. I I thought it's it's this is serious enough that, that maybe I don't want to, it's not, a, it's not, it's not good fodder for humor. Cause in the beginning, there were a lot of jokes, not so much anymore. No, unless you're Saturday night live. Oh, I saw that bit. That was good. They did the COVID family. Yeah. The COVID so everything family. I just said, strike it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, um, I, I, you know, um, I, I enjoyed the, um, uh, the, uh, uniqueness of it early on because I'm a I'm a pretty social person and I and I actually I actually had COVID back in I got I got I got COVID back on St. Patrick's Day of 2020 so I actually had it 11 days worth got it out of the way was tested um, I actually ended up donating blood a bunch of times because they were thinking that the antibodies, the antibodies that you have in your system was worthwhile. So I got, I hope you gave a hundred percent, Scott, but I gave a hundred percent, but I donated blood at, at Bay state, but you know, but early on it was, you know, we were doing a lot of these things with our friends and, um, and then as the weather got better, uh, we were, we, some of our friends would go and tailgate um, in different places so we could spend some time together and then, then it just, then it really got very, very serious and we haven't really gotten out of it yet. And we're coming into a really serious uh, portion of it right now until the vaccine finally gets its way around. But it's, it's been, it's gone like this. It's been a, it's been a roller coaster ride. I think the interesting thing with all of this too is, is we all found new ways to deal with it. Dave, you were doing concerts in your, your, your driveway. I, uh, I did. Yeah. I, when, when all the gigs went away, uh, at first I didn't miss playing that much. Uh, it was like a nice break from it. And then I realized, wow, I, I have to make music for somebody. And, um, and so uh, we advertised them around the neighborhood and uh, I, I had some guest artists, you know, six feet away. And, uh, but we did driveway concerts and it, it was a lot of fun. The neighbors showed up with their lawn chairs and their, their, their right. dinners and, uh, it was really appreciated. It, was, it made me think that, you know, you, you shouldn't have to have a pandemic as an excuse to do a driveway concert. It's very true. That's really mm -hmm. true. I think we, you know, we kind of learned, uh, we kind of learned a different way to, uh, to interact with each other. I remember when, you know, when the weather started to get, you know, to turn from March into April, you know, families were, families were, cause you know, you had to isolate fam the Sunday dinners all of a sudden became in vogue. Uh, up at Look Park, you'd go out on a Sunday and there would be people walking around going for walks like they used to do, you know, 30, 40 years ago. So it, in many ways, it was kind of a back to the future moment for everybody. So, you know, despite all the, uh, the sadness um, and the heartache that COVID has brought on for a lot of people, it really did teach us all a different way to get along. Yeah, walking through Forest Park felt kind of like the 70s. You could buy pot anywhere. <laughs> legally this time though <laughs> yeah these days you don't even have to go to do that you can you, know, you don't even have to know a guy anymore you can just go to the store 
You know, it's true. I think, you know, if you look for an upside of everything that happened with COVID, it, it, I think it made it made us all realize that we don't need all of the complicated things that we've had in our lives. You can simplify things and it's okay. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, it, there, there were a lot of things about it that, um, you know, again, to take a positive out of a very negative situation, it really did teach us all how to kind of get back to basics and it was, it, everything, everything slowed down and it, it was, it was, you know, it's going to be very memorable uh, for a, a lot of different reasons. But enough already. Enough already. Enough already. Exactly. Yeah. We're definitely done. I, we, I got the, we got the lesson. We, got yeah, the we learned. Yeah, yeah. And, and that makes you wonder. It's like, you know, we're going, going along and going along that, that there was a message to all of us. It's like, you know, we've all got to slow down. And you know, or stop the, completely. Yeah. 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 And I guess, and it, you know, to, uh, you know, politics has been uh, the underlying thread this year uh, in, in such a big way. And, you know, about COVID, it was interesting how, I mean, there's three of us here and I don't know, maybe we, we might have, you know, similar opinions about how we dealt with it and what we think about it, but somebody who was a relative or a friend, you know, can be, there were a lot of polar opposites too. Uh, someone who you thought would feel a certain way about an obvious situation to you looked at it in a completely different way than you did. Yeah, that's the other part of this year. It's like you add to the COVID-19 uh, mix of the presidential race and uh, the insanity of all that that continues uh, to this day. Uh, you know, regardless of our political opinions, uh, this is, I, I've never in my life seen anything like what we saw this year no um trump's got that nickname thing you know and uh i was afraid uh, with the sleepy joe thing i think every time biden finishes a speech he walks off the stage and mutters sleepy joe my ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know you know you look at the year and you wonder it's it, it's I, I look back on, and we we were all around. I was a little bit older than both of you guys. It, up until this year, used to be, uh, used to be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still no. got you both. Not, not but, so much now. But up until this year, f for me, as I look back on it, during the time because I was in high school, didn't think that much about it. But the worst year in my life, as far as turmoil in this country, was 1968. Uh, and then all of a sudden we have 2020. And if you, you never thought that anything could top 1968, but uh, this comes damn close. Well, it could get worse. We'll see. I don't think, I don't think it's going to get worse. Um, you know, one of the things I wanted to say earlier was that uh, in the political climate that we've had in 2020 is that, you know, uh, social media, you know, Facebook, um, Twitter, the social media platforms has made everyone an expert and has given everyone a voice. Um, and you, you, you know, when people were faced with situations, the only people they had to talk to and express their crazy opinions to were their families, you know, AKA the crazy uncle, <laughs> now that crazy uncle is on social media and everybody knows what your crazy uncle is talking about. And for whatever reason, you know, his opinions are given credence when they don't deserve any credence at all. So that's made everything worse. And Dave, you brought up 1968 and it's like, I, you know, that that's a time period that I've, that I've studied very closely. I'm a bit of a history buff. And when you look at the way people are looking at the world now, and we, we all take sides now, there's, we're, we're, it's, it, there's very little gray in the world. It's there's black no and middle, white. No middle ground. There's no middle ground. So you can look at people and the way they, and I'm not going to say it positively or negatively, just, just I'm stating a point, just a, you know, a, a point of fact. The things that happened in 1968 and when you sit there and say, how would I have reacted to that? The way you're reacting to the world now is the way you would have reacted back then. Mm -hmm. So this has given us an opportunity to go through a 1968 period and know where we would have stood had we lived back then. 
Yeah, it makes aside sense. from the '68 comeback special, which I think was Elvis at his prime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into leather, Dave. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, that's something. Is that is that what we we don't see? Yeah, you know, you're not, and you're not going to. Okay. <laughs> I, I have some vinyl in the bookshelf. There you go. That's that figures. Melt that down and make it a pair of pants. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, and as you look through the year, uh, anything else? Well, I, you know, I, I, we had the Academy Awards this year and uh, uh, Parasite swept the Oscars. Have you either Dave, one of you seen Parasite? Dave, aren't you a little old to care about the Academy Awards? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Come on. <laughs> No, Dave. We're I, about I the same not, age. I did not. I did not see that that movie. So, no. what does that you know? What does that say? I I don't know. It's what Dave. Have you seen it? Uh, no, no. My no, right. my All pop right, so. culture. But your point, but Dave, your point is normally you would have you would have seen the movie of the year or be familiar with it. Yes. Yeah, but not not Parasite. No, not Parasite. It's no. not a movie I would have seen anyways. You know, it, it just just the title of it just kind of. I'll tell you lately, lately when, when we watch stuff, when my wife and I watch things, I'm finding, I just want to watch comedy. I'm, I'm, I'm not even enjoying drama, good drama. You know, we're watching the, some certain series on Netflix and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd rather laugh right now. Yeah. What, what are you watching on Netflix, Dave? I like Shit's Creek. I can say that on the air, right? And yeah. uh, I'm going to have to superimpose it underneath you on YouTube. The, the spelling. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I know I'll, I'll enjoy the right stuff because I love the movie and I love the whole story about the Mercury seven astronauts, but it's yet to grab me. Uh, I love Mrs. Maisel and waiting for that season to come along. I love when is that. When is that? Do you know when that's coming? I, we were just talking I, I about don't know. Last night. Shame, right. Shameless is back though for the last season. I like Shameless. Everything for those if you uh, recommendations. I watched it last night uh, on HBO Max, the, uh, the special in the Bee Gees. The documentary oh, yeah. on the Bee Gees. Oh, I saw something on 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 Facebook about that today. People were talking about it. Oh, it just it 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 was really it it brought you back because th that that's a group. But you talk about reinventing yourself at least four different times. Yep. Yeah, and that's just their teeth. And that's just their teeth. And but their so hair. <laughs> and their hair, but so identified with disco and how it almost destroyed them. Uh, but it it brought back to the, to those times how uh, disco kind of died on a on the baseball field at Comiskey Park in Chicago one night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I was at 1983, Dave. Before yeah, the that, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was I was playing the Holiday in Top of the Round uh, in 1979, 1980, and we were doing. Well, you can tell by the way I move my walk. I'm a woman's man. No time to talk. So that was like 79, 80, right? 79, 80, yeah. All yeah. right, Dave. Listen, I'd, I'd, I'd just like to say that it took only 20 minutes for Dave to sing and play the piano. That's a new Thank you very record. much. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> that, I knocked this off of, uh, off of 2020. As you look back on the year, what other things will you guys remember? Well, being the sports guy, Dave, is the, the way uh, we experienced um, – uh, you know, uh, sports, you know, it's, it started in March with, you know, with the, with the final four being, um, I was down in Atlanta, I think it was in January for, uh, the U S Olympic marathon, uh, trials. And, uh, they have them, you know, we stayed right in the, down by, uh, uh, the CNN center and the Mercedes, you know, stadium was right next door where they were going to do the final four and COVID really had, had not hit yet. And there were rumors about the final four being canceled. So it went from the final four to baseball being canceled and finally getting going. And then, you know, and then the NBA and the NHL and the, and the way the, the NFL is now going through things, they sport pro sports had to completely reinvent itself. And that's one of the things that, you know, a large major, majority of the people who live in the country, you know, it weaves their weaves its way, you know, throughout their lives on a daily basis. So for me, that that's the biggest thing. And it continues today with no fans in the stands. Yeah. David it did the same sort of thing to the entertainment industry too. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and I look at the musicians and, and I'm, I'm a gigging musician and so is my daughter and my son sometimes. And 
you know, so I'm out of all my gigs. She's out of all her gigs. Um, but, you know, look at the big acts. I mean, every 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 stage of entertainment from the local local guy to the, the big stadium, you know, whatever, the, they're all out of work. Everybody, you know, the bands I like to go see, the, the music I like to play is like nothing, all gone everywhere. Um, so I'll remember that. I don't know. 2020, I remember COVID and Trump. That, that, that's what it comes down to for me. I had a, you talk about that. I had a conversation uh, in the podcast in July with uh, Keith Lockhart, uh, the conductor of the Boston Pops. And, and I made the statement to him at the time. I said, you talk about the great equalizer. I said, right now, the conductor of the Boston Pops is no different than the conductor on the T. <laughs> You're both out of work. Yeah. yeah. You know what it did. Um, but you know, you know too, Dave, well, one of the other things like Dave, you know, Dave was talking about having concerts in his driveway. Um, you know, the, uh, the Tanglewood, uh, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, Tanglewood, um, the Springfield Symphony Orchestra, they were all clients of mine uh, buying radio time from me. And it's like, so like all that money went away, which was, you know, our industry took a huge hit. And now we're, we're slowly coming back from all that. But when you're on the mailing lists, you know, they, they were doing, they were using Zoom and using social media to try and uh, perform. Um, they, sure. they had to reinvent themselves. And, you know, as far as being lucrative, it certainly wasn't, but at least it was something where they were able to play music. They were able to deliver their music to an audience. And, you know, I think everyone is just trying to put one foot in front of the other until, you know, the, the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, which hopefully will be um, end of second quarter of 2021. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get to go see James Taylor play at Tanglewood in July. Uh, I think yeah. that's, that's the goal. You wonder too, it, it, you, you look at this whole thing and wonder what this would have been without the internet and zoom uh, that, that at least that helped us stay in, in touch with each other. Right. My friends and I had Zoom happy hours uh, when things got really dark in um, in April. You know, we were we're all uh, you know I'm in I'm in a, you know basically advertising now, and um, you know you sit at a bar and you you uh, converse and do business with clients. We weren't able to do that and even hang out with our friends. So we'd have five or six guys on a on a Zoom call like this at you know five o'clock in the afternoon. We'd all have a cocktail and we would, you know, try to catch up on each other's lives. It, you know, God forbid we didn't have that opportunity doing this. Yeah. We, we would get, we get together uh, still with friends uh, on weekend nights. Um, and we play, we play games. We play trivial pursuit hmm. categories. Um, Jenga does not work on zoom. You don't want to play, <laughs> don't want to play Jenga, but, uh, you talk about not you, working right. I mean, you were doing performances in your driveway. I sat in my driveway in a chair. And I read the news <laughs> and my neighbors were not pleased. That's so funny. Well, it, had, it had been a long time coming. They looked at me and they said, the old man has lost his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? That's, that's gone on since the beginning of time. It certainly has. I, you know, I thought, well, Hey, I could be the town crier again. Yeah, really? No, no, it didn't work. Uh, you know, as, as you look ahead to 2021, what are your hopes? We're, we're, Zoom, the Zoom time limits are killing us here. But as you as you look ahead to 2021, uh, what do you hope for? Go ahead, Dave. Um, well, I don't want no, I don't know how political you want to get, but this, I, I have a lot of uh, I have Go a ahead. lot of hope for 2021. Let's just just say that um, I, I like this new administration and. Um, and the vaccine is everything. And uh, I just want to see everything gradually come back. It's, it's going to take a, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hearing different predictions. Some people are going to say, Oh, it's all going to come back gradually little by little. And, everybody, and uh, other people think it's just going to, people are just going to go nuts. Like prohibition ended, you know, just boom, every, everything's starting up at once. But uh, I, I want to play gigs. I want to, I want to make music for people. I want to make money again. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Very true. Scott, how about you? I just, I, you know, um, just, you know, sound cliche. I, I just hope we can get back to some uh, semblance of normalcy. I, I don't think, I don't think it's ever going to get back to the way it was. Um, I still, you know, 
I look at I look at little kids who are wearing masks and you can imagine how vigilant their parents have been with them about keeping your hands clean, don't touch this, don't touch that. And these kids are 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 just they're teeny tiny. They're they are they their formative years have they've gone through something that is life changing. Yeah. And it's they're never ever ever going to experience the world again like they did a year and a half ago. And I think a lot of us are I don't think it's ever going to be the same, but the the sooner we can at least get back to an opportunity where we can try the better. I hope so. I wish you both a happy new year. Yeah, you too, Dave. Dave. And better things. Dave, have you got a song you can leave us with as we uh, head on out of here? I wrote a um, a very short Christmas song I'd like to do for you. It's uh, it's, It's for 2020. I will. I'll be home for Christmas. On Zoom, like all the rest, I won't see Snow or Uncle Joe. Perhaps that's for the best. I hope you like my presents I spent my money on. If not, then just return them, because they're all from Amazon. (laughs) Thank you, my friends. (laughs) <laughs> thank you thanks for having peace me. guys happy new year my thanks to dave and scott for being my guest this week on the even better western mass podcast i'm dave Matson. thanks for watching or listening to this week's edition of even better western mass happy new year here's to better things in 2021 stay safe stay well and if you can join me next week